This is the Source Seeker Hour. This is our 147th episode of the Source Seeker Hour. We've been doing this for a while, and I, I feel very blessed to still be here and have this opportunity, especially on a day like today in this special episode. We're talking about mental health and the holidays. When I started this show, I wanted to include at least an emphasis on mental health. Uh, throughout my life, uh, I have been involved in mental health, either directly, indirectly, or some way. And as a special ed teacher, I see it all the time. And it is, whether we like to talk about it or not, it's a very prominent issue in most people's life. There's no perfect person that does not endure stress, does not endure tribulations. So we have to be a little bit more comfortable talking about this particular issue. And I chose the time of the holidays because it is exasperated. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it is increased greatly and it's not talked about. One of the reasons I believe it increases during this time is because we see in this expectation of good cheer and all good things and Santa Claus and the holidays and everybody with these great wishes. And a lot of people, they're not feeling that. It's not what their actual lives are. So we want to talk about that as I'm inviting another guest in, and mental health is life. It is life. And I want to introduce my guests and have them give an introduction and then give a statement on what do you see as mental health being in people's life? How can they find a greater, I guess, level of balance? and especially during the holidays. Uh, Dr. Deborah Wilson, how you doing? Uh, thank you. Uh, introduce yourself and then give a statement. What do you see mental health impacting in people's life? We can't hear you. Your, your volume is out. Okay, so you should be able to hear me now. So yes, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for having me on your show. And uh, so I am uh, Deborah Wilson. Yes. Uh, I um, train mental health professionals. So I'm a college uh, uh, counselor, educator. Uh, I... Uh, I'm an LPC, a licensed professional counselor, and also a licensed mm -hmm. chemical dependency counselor here in Texas. Um, and I've uh, worked in the field for probably the last 30 years. Uh, had my own private practice for many years where I worked with a lot of uh, families and uh, children. Uh, and now I, you know, kind of maintain a private practice with a few clients now so that I could keep up with what's going on in the field so that I could be a better teacher in the classroom. Uh, as far as um, mental health and wellness, which is a perspective from which uh, I like to come. <clears throat> and as far as mental illness is concerned, we can say that someone is mentally, is doing well mentally if do they, they do not um, uh, suffer from any type of dementia, schizophrenia, uh, uh, life interrupting depression, anxiety, et cetera. And in the time 
in which the times in which we uh, all coexist right now uh, to be not impacted by at least some depression or anxiety or being uh, bothered with some type of addiction is kind of rare. Um, <clears throat> and one of the things that is most prevalent right now is uh, a little bit of depression and anxiety and a lot of it has to do with loneliness. I know you all have probably been hearing a lot about loneliness uh, in addition to trauma, but uh, around this time of year, going all the way back around to what you were saying, and I guess kind of the topic we're going to hit on tonight, um, um, the holiday season with what we've gone through with the last three years and with what is going on in the world now, uh, I think it's got a lot of people um, feeling a certain kind of way. And so I think I'll stop right there and let somebody else talk for a while. Mental health in the holidays is hard on people. You mentioned loneliness. And of course, people don't want to reach out. Hey, I'm, I want somebody to come visit me. Hey, uh -huh. I want somebody to call me. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a stigma to mental health. And mm -hmm. if you say, hey, I'm depressed, hey, uh -huh. I'm anxious, or any of those things, if you admit that, then mm -hmm. people might be a little uncomfortable about mm -hmm. you know, being or negotiating mm -hmm. or talking with you or whatever it, mm -hmm. it, it may come about. So mm -hmm. those are the points that I, I'd like to get to. There's somebody out there right now listening to us on Facebook mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's very, very lonely and would mm -hmm. like somebody to reach out to them. I hope right. that they uh, enter to the chat and say, hey, I'm here. I'd like to speak. And we right. want to hear from them. Uh, Brother Times, how you doing? Are you there, Brother Times? Yes, I'm here. How are you? Good to hear I'm, you. I'm, I'm doing fine. Can you introduce yourself, uh, uh, Pastor Times? Yes, uh, my name is... Uh, Pastor Christopher Times, I've been preaching and teaching the word for, oh my goodness, since 1990. Um, I work from home a lot. I've done mental health quite a bit. I got my master's degree in counseling uh, back in uh, 2016. Before that, I've been doing pastoral counseling, like I said, since, wow, back in the 90s. Work with a lot of families. Uh, in mental health. Um, I'm also an educator and um, work in the field of education. Uh, middle school uh, is where I teach currently, uh, and I enjoy it, uh, but I, I see a lot of challenges, uh, particularly with depression and anxiety. Um, also, uh, anger management. I work quite a bit with those children and adults. Uh, when I worked at a local um, county uh, facility without spilling too much or saying names um, of where I work, I work with a lot of uh, adults. Uh, I did uh, anger management groups for years. Uh, and uh, I saw a lot of different things emerge in that group. I also did it in Virginia and uh, licensed up there. And uh, for a number of years, worked in the emergency department of a hospital, which I said I'd never do again because it's so stressful. <laughs> but, you know, I saw a lot of anxiety, a lot of substance abuse, um, lots of uh, people who had borderline uh, traits and things of that nature. So the mental health is a real thing. I've noticed with the kids in particular, uh, now nowadays, they ex they have a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of addictive behaviors with video games, 
uh, with uh, the telephone, um, with anything that's electronic and interactive. Uh, it's a huge problem. And I've noticed that they uh, decompensate very easily. Uh, they say they want to kill themselves. They don't want to live. They want to die. Whenever they are challenged uh, by any authority figures. Uh, and uh, so there's a lot going on there. Uh, and they're not able to regulate emotionally. Uh, so we've got a lot of issues, I think, in society today with a lot of different kids <laughs> and adults. A lot of times when I talk to the kids, I call home, and I don't know if you all experienced this, but mom or dad or both might have the same types of challenges. And so uh, it's a lot going on with regard to mental health, I think. Very much so. I, as I previously said, mental health is life. And and as uh, Dr. Monero said, Dr. Uh, uh, Deborah Wilson said, hey, it's very rare to have a person that is not impacted by the things going on. And that, again, mm -hmm. increases during the holidays. Again, I want to state, if there's somebody out there who's really going through some issues, uh, reach out to uh, Pastor Times, reach out to Dr. Uh, Deborah, uh, reach out to whomever you feel comfortable with. Uh, we all go through things and we all need somebody to talk to. Uh, one of the uh, reasons that I started the Source Seeker Hour is helped me to be able to reach out and talk to people also. I've improved greatly in my communication as well as just reaching out to people skills uh, by having this show. But during the holidays, things can get crazy. There's more drinking, there's more, uh, and it's kind of expected that you will share in the festivities and some people don't have an invitation and they're at home. And so what are they gonna do at home? They're gonna maybe, if that's their thing, extra drink, extra smoke, extra be extra depressed. And I've been through those kinds of things and it's a difficult uh, process to get out of. That's why it's so important to have this conversation. What are some of the things uh, oh, I, I apologize, Sister Paula, did you uh, want to share uh, anything about uh, the subject of mental health? I did want to uh, briefly say that as you were speaking, I was thinking about my hairstylist and uh, I'm going to step away and contact him um, because I know he's dealing with something right now. He's dealing with some mental issues and um, he is one of those guys that ha will give you all the advice that you need. Mm -hmm. But when he is going through something, he shuts the door all the way. And I may get a text that says, hey, I'm going through something. You know, I'll reach out to you when I'm better. That's not enough for me. So I continue to text him just to try to, you know, see if he'll respond. But I am going to step away just for a few minutes um, just to give him a call because I know he is dealing with something. And yes, he's been dealing please. with this for longer than two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'll be back. Uh, I, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to reach out to Charles and see if I could get him on the phone um, because That's he may need to uh, speak out. to one of you guys. Yes, ma'am. Reach out okay. and touch and maybe that's the thing he needs. I understand, I've been there before. Uh, Dr. Deborah, during the holidays, you have a practice, you've, you've had clients, you have clients. What are some of the things that they say are their pressing issues during the holidays? Uh, is it so much pressure trying to give presents to everybody who wants some? Or does their loneliness really increase or their recognition of their loneliness increase during that time? 
Mm-hmm. Well, you know, in 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 these times, uh, in, in particularly this Christmas, we're coming, and we still have to talk about COVID because see, COVID is still alive, but a million over a million people died over the course of COVID. And you still have people who are dealing with the effects of long COVID. But let's talk about the loneliness for those that have lost individuals. So that's one aspect of what's going on. Before COVID, we were talking about seasonal affect disorder. That is uh, generally <clears throat> the, the, the time between summer and changes into the fall, right? Changing weather, changing daylight savings time, um, <clears throat> changing routines. Particularly, they said it was something that existed in the North, uh, but it, it happens in general with the changes in the season, just like the leaves falling from the tree. Right, they wither up and they fall, and you got them all over the place. So they're going through some kind of transformation, and we go through a transformation too. Right, we're on this life's journey, right, and we change just like the seasons. Only our changes are not as apparent as the changes in the season. And so when we start feeling a certain kind of way, we're thinking, well, it's something wrong with me, right? It's almost like taking something personal, right? But so if you isolate yourself, if you've been through anything, trauma, uh, uh, loss, anything in your life, that can start running through your head. Like for instance, over the course of COVID, I talked to a lot of individuals who were now working at home and they might have been single and they might have, you know, you know, whatever it took for them to get where they were. Uh, And so being isolated, you start having these thoughts going on in your head. And so I would have to have a lot of conversation, you know, conversations. And it was good because this time, allowed them to reflect and do a little bit of introspection, but it didn't feel good to them because they didn't have anybody to bounce it off of or to to have a discussion with. And so whatever the problem may have been, it might have caused some feelings of guilt, resentment, or uh, start causing them to question what if, what if, what if. And so my recommendation, let let me just wrap this up. So my recommendation was to reach out to somebody else because when you're in it by yourself, the mind can take it out of proportion. Where is it? If you have somebody to talk to, then you can resolve it and say, oh, well, that's a relief. I thought it was just me. Okay, that's what I was trying to do. So my question to to you on that suggestion and that statement is, do you find that is okay, comfortable, people willing to do that, or is there resistance to even discussing the subject of mental health? And, you know, let's say they don't even want to approach it in that terminology, Let's just say, hey, my, I got a few things I'm dealing with, or whatever they would say. Um, I don't, I, I don't particularly like to come up with the term mental health, but it really explains everything. But there's such a stigma about it, and every time we do a show, I ask this question: How mm-hmm. can we better get past that st- stigma? I believe things like this, this conversation that we have it, is mm-hmm. probably the best approach where 
people who are watching, who are listening, they can pick a little bit up and maybe feel a little bit more comfortable mm -hmm. having a discussion. Uh, while we're waiting on our, our other guests to come, can you share on that? So let me tell you, and I use my personal story. I had been depressed for probably about three to six months. That level of depression started intensifying over time. You have to say, okay, we'll just get up. And then you just get up. Okay, now go brush your teeth. Getting up and brushing your I, teeth. I wanna, if, if you yes. allow me, I would like to stop right here. Okay. Some people don't understand. You said just get up. Just they get said, up. Well, of course you go get up. No, that's not true. That's right. That is not true that right. you are stuck in a state of paralysis because all the things you have in your head. That's if right. If I get and up, they're going to see that I'm not okay. If I get up and walk out, they're going to identify that, you know, something is wrong there. And, or, and so you, or I'd rather be by myself. I don't, I don't want to be bothered with the world. I've got this computer or I've got this cell phone, right? Uh, that's enough for me. But the problem with that is the artificial, uh, the, the, the problem with that is that while I have this happy face all the time and I'm smiling and everything is fine, I'm really not doing well at all. So just to cut short, I finally was honest enough to say, wait a minute, look, I'm depressed. And people ask, well, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. But I know you don't want to say that to anybody, but it's got to be somebody out there that you are comfortable enough with and say, feel safe with or feel that it's safe enough to disclose to them how you're feeling. Or you want to be vulnerable because your overall mental health and well-being depends on you being honest with yourself. And that is such the dilemma with mental health discussions mm -hmm. or people seeking mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. I would believe that it would increase during the holidays. Mm -hmm. However, I don't have empirical evidence to state that. I do know the level of domestic violence, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, anxiety, and all of those particular things increase during those times. That's right. Why? Because I guess we are reminded that we want these things to assist our family, help our mm -hmm. family, uh, mm -hmm. be the person that brings good things to everybody. Mm -hmm. but we may not be able to, or we mm -hmm. just might not be have mm -hmm. the spirit to. And mm -hmm. because we don't have the spirit to, that makes us feel mm -hmm. bad. Right. And another thing is, is that it's a good thing and, and I would advise anybody that is depressed to be vulnerable and talk about it because depression left unchecked turns into chronic depression. And when I say turns into chronic depression, then we start talking about changes in the brain, right? Yes. And so, and then, then we start talking medication and talk therapy as opposed to talk therapy meaning talk to somebody that you feel safe with you know um and let them know how you're feeling right because it's amazing how a conversation can change things around in instantly but if you don't like conversation yes how deep into uh, 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 an abyss we can get in terms of our overall mental health. Yes, And so I always say, 
if God intended us to be alone, he would have only made one person or made us all look alike, uh, move alike, right? And it would be a pretty boring world. And so we're, it, it's gotta be, I usually start my sessions with a, 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 a family tree when we, you know, after we establish a little bit of rapport, because what I want to find out is what kind of supports an individual has out there, right? And some people say, well, I don't have anybody. I don't have this. I don't have that. It's got to be somebody out there. If you if you get up and you get out, it's got to be somebody somewhere. And if you talk long enough to them, you'll find out that there's somebody out there. But everybody, I don't care where you go, everybody needs somebody or you need to find a group to be a part of because your overall mental health and well-being depends on it. Yes, ma'am. Brother Times, we mentioned about, Dr. Deborah mentioned that mental health and a depression could put you into a state where you do not want to even get up and move. You're so paralyzed by all of the things that go on in your mind, the self-doubt, the, the feelings and so forth, where you don't want to even be a part of the world and you fighting with yourself. Uh, share that and what can people do during the holidays to help them rise above that mindset? Well, no, it's an excellent, excellent question. Um, I have noticed and seen in my, I have a small private practice also. Mm -hmm. uh, and also in other practices that I've been a part of, both in Virginia and in Texas, it's been the same presentation. Um, depression and anxiety, uh, I, I always tell my clients, they're like cousins. They're related. They go together. Where you find one, you're going to find the other one. And most most often, they have commingling, you know, symptomatology. So you're going to have this convergence, right? Uh, and, and most people don't want to admit that, you know, uh, I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety out of COVID. Yeah. I got COVID, mm -hmm. COVID did me wrong, mm -hmm. <laughs> did me wrong, y'all, mm -hmm. three weeks. And I was still working in the clinic, dealing with this county system and dealing with the hospital. I was moonlighting in the medical center. You know what I mean? <laughs> the whole bit and y'all let me tell you something Christopher broke down uh, I found myself in the emergency I'm gonna tell I can tell it tell I it found you. myself in the emergency room mm -hmm. and UTMB talking to a doctor that's right telling this lady that I want to kill myself now what does that sound like that sounds like you know that's a major depression mm -hmm. I I never had that before Mm -hmm. But somehow, neurologically, I think, mm -hmm. uh, COVID attacked my brain, mm -hmm. and it caused me to have neurological problems. I've got long COVID symptoms right now, and that was in 2021 when I got COVID, that right before it was Christmas, y'all. I'll never forget it. And I felt like it, this, this virus it was insidious, and I felt like <laughs> it was trying to kill me. I talked to everybody that I've ever talked to about it. And if they had it bad, a mm -hmm. lot of people, you know, shared it. I, I remember going to my my physician. Uh -huh. And we had, a, you know, physicians bill very, you know, you in and out of there, in and out of there, like in five minutes, you know, most of the mm -hmm. time. I think we talked for a long time because of the shared experience that That's right. no one seemed to be talking about really uh, in earnest. So we've got a lot of depression. The holidays right. used to be the main thing. You know, when you get to the holidays, it's like, oh, suicidal ideation goes up and all this kind of stuff. But I find now the truth is more in the middle. You've mm -hmm. got people in a constant state of anxiety <laughs> and, and depression. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you're experiencing these things, that cortisol in your brain that causes you to 
respond in a natural way to stress to save your life now is turn a, turn on you know and on a, a, a continual basis so now you've got stress hormones We're flowing right mm -hmm. through your right yes and, mm -hmm. and and so that creates this automatic response to your autonomic system and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you've you're in fight flight and freeze mode all the time that's See? all the time Mm -hmm. All the time, and then you've got the cerebellum that's kicked in. Your emotions are tagging. You see how this can be a bit of a it's quagmire. Shut down. <laughs> oh yes, it shuts down. I tell my clients, I said, you've got two brains. Mm -hmm. I said, you got the dumb brain, this mm -hmm. part right here, prefrontal cortex, dumb brain, last to know anything, and then you got the smart brain. We call it the body brain. And mm -hmm. so you've got all of this happening. There's no way you can deal with it on your own. That's right. And That's right. And, 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 and what depression does uh, chiefly, and I think it's insidious in and of itself, despite COVID, uh, mm -hmm. is that it causes you to want to isolate. That's right. It causes you to want to be by yourself. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. You got mood disorder and all this kind of stuff. It's it, co-mingling. And so you don't want to be dealing. You get angry. You overeat. You know, I used to be 300 pounds, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because of all of that. And so you, you, it forces you. And I, you know, the way I frame it in my mind is, is that, and I tell my clients is, is that depression functions in a way mm -hmm. that, that causes you to operate in an atypical fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, from the way God, because of the spiritual counsel, the way Absolutely. from from the way God has created us, right? We're created to be in communion with each other, right? That's, that's, so what is right. what does depression do? It attacks that immediately, that's, that's and it right. wants you to it make it forces you to. I, I love when y'all said about getting out of bed and how hard it is. I had a client in Virginia. That was so depressed. Did you mm -hmm. not? The man stayed in the bed for days at a time. Mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. This man, and you know, you wonder, how do you do that? Don't you have to go to the restroom? Don't you have to eat? No, you don't. You get severe depression like that. It literally, what depression it does, y'all, it depresses. Yeah, yeah. Your entire system. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. shut down. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very complex. It's mm -hmm. not really simple. And I don't want anybody to listening to this to think that depression has only one or two presentations. No, it has a lot of different. Think of it like an octopus. It has a lots of different types of presentations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and they're not the same. My depression and your depression, they're not gonna look alike. That's right. You know, that, they that's a very important trait. point right there. Go ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. They have shared, shared point. So we've got a lot there. And, you know, it's not a cookie-cutter mm -hmm. disorder. None of the disorders really are, but depression is particularly common and insidious, I think. Right. I'll right. stop there. I could talk forever about it, but yes. Pastor it's, Times, it's a lot. Uh, I'd like for you to share uh, when you do your, your show online, your online ministry. So somebody out there they, they don't know how to reach out to you. And uh, I want to mention also that me and Dr. Deborah are working on a mental health show that we are looking forward to bringing to you to further assist uh, our mm -hmm. community. Uh, Pastor Times, can you share about your ministry? Um, yes, I do Bible study from home. And uh, I have different people show up in person and also via this particular medium, also uh, mm -hmm. Facebook Live uh, and the like. Um, and, you know, I do it every week, uh, Sunday at 7 p.m. And mm -hmm. uh, I usually push it out, uh, Facebook Live. You can catch me on there, Chris Times. Uh, think of the New York Times, spell it just like that. And you'll find me there. And mm -hmm. you could also look me up on Instagram. And uh, I, I, you know, I talk about well the Bible, obviously, but but there's a lot of other things that I do too. So you know, I'll do podcasts like this also. So it's important. I think that we educate. I, you know, also have a podcast that I push out too, not on the, nearly a, a regular basis as I used to, but 
it's on uh different platforms you can find it on spotify or or on um many other platforms you can just look up my name uh christopher times and uh mm -hmm. i call it body mind spirit right i call it body mind spirit with christopher times and it's because well mental health it is body mind spirit it really you've got to address mm -hmm. all three in order to be effective with uh it, mm -hmm. With uh, that piece, uh, one other thing is that I, I tell my clients, and sometimes you have to show people, right, mm -hmm. uh, what what what's going on with them. You know, uh, this is a taboo subject for you know. Mm -hmm. And so I said, look, your your mental health is is your garden. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and what you put in your garden will grow or will not grow, but is conditioned on what what kind of soil quality you have, right? All soil isn't the same. And so if you have healthy soil that's full of nutrients and all of that, then whatever you plant will grow, right? It will be vibrant. But what if you have depleted soil, right? What if you have stress and everything else has gotten you down and you, you haven't re replenished your soil and it's depleted of nutrients? Well, not much is going to grow there. It's going to be very difficult, you see. And so I talk about that and how you have to plant your garden and tend to your garden in order for it to grow. Even after you've gotten your pr products, right, uh, after your harvest, you still have to maintain the garden, right? And so I emphasize maintenance, <laughs> mental health maintenance. I think everybody, honestly, should get uh, see a therapist once a month. My bias, but... I think it's important, and it's just for maintenance, if nothing else. Maybe one day that will be the norm, but there is still a stigma attached to mental health. Maybe we need to call it something else, uh, healthy living, or some other term that will take glad that. You, Go mm -hmm. ahead. I'm glad you said that because I, that, that word stigma is, it's it's overused it's outdated and i think we need to talk about it in a different way because uh i think that more people are are are, are open to uh admission that we have problems and if we can put them in perspective now one of the things that uh, reverend times was saying was you know, how all of this stuff works in order. And so the nature of the universe, like I was talking about the trees, you know, and the changes of the season, you know, the leaves fall and then comes the pile, then comes the, the winter and then the spring and on to the summer and, you know, the pollen and these different bees. So the nature of the universe in which we all coexist is balance. And we being an aspect of the universe are a part of that. And so when there's something just not quite right with us, it's our body, our mind, our soul telling us that we need to recalibrate, right? We need to get it. And how do you do that? With a car, you take it to a shop, right? With a, a tear or lose a button on the shirt, you take it to the cleaners. So what about your mind, right? And so we want to to understand that you know it's it you know the the world tells us that you got to be in control and you you know this social control and you got to be perfect and and you know just from the beauty and everything and that's not how it is. The the nature of the universe is balance. We seek. Balance. Balance is the nature of. I peace. must say that is not how it is, but that's how people wish to project themselves that that's right. everything is perfect, and that's right. where the mental health comes in. I, right. I just want to mention right here: this is the one hundred and forty seventh episode of the Source Seeker Hour, and I would like to mention a couple of, of sponsors. Uh, Daryl Malloy Renaissance Realty. If you have 
uh, realty or real estate that you would like to purchase, that you would like to sell, call Daryl Malloy at 469-649-6274. That's Renaissance Realty. I also want to mention Tanzania Tours, Brother Godwin King. If you want to travel to Africa, Tanzania, Arusha, uh, Arusha is where the Serengeti is, Mount Kilimanjaro, a great experience. And if you want to go there, Godwin Kingy will take care of you. He's at 255-769-04788. And those are two of our sponsors, and I'd like to share those. Uh, did you have another statement, uh, Dr. D Dr. Wilson? No, uh, I, I've just enjoyed this. And uh, well, we I, have a little I, bit more time. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, I, I just, I, I just encourage people to talk about to uh, even if you, if you have to come here online and, and 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 say something, have a conversation with somebody because sometimes you might be going through something like I said before, and you will have a conversation with somebody. And it can change your whole perspective, your whole outlook. But there's a double-edged sword in that. Because you talked about, uh, Dr. Wilson, that we get wrapped into our technology and we don't need, quote, unquote, uh, have to talk to somebody. Because mm -hmm. we, can, we can order groceries from our phone. We can uh, have a, a, a doctor... We can talk to them online. So there's a lot of different things that help you to isolate, and that's a double-edged sword. Yeah. These things well, are a benefit and an advantage, but they can also make us more lonely, more uh, longing for human touch, and, and so forth. So it's a, it's a difficult thing. I, so I believe mental health, Again, it's, it's, it's been a part of my life. And I, I've seen how destructive it can be mm -hmm. to a mm -hmm. whole generation. Right, right. Okay. That, uh, because if you look at things like, of course, addiction and drug usage, which is a byproduct mm -hmm. of a mental health imbalance, in my opinion. And a byproduct of something else being wrong because... Uh, the use of substances, mind-altering substances, is an indication that something is going on and is used as an escape from the reality of your situation. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and there's and, so many and, people that rely on that. Right. And it is thought, according to the Super Bowl commercials, that it makes you feel good. You become yeah. uninhibited. And, but as soon as the dust settles, it's a it's a depressant and can multiply those feelings of dread, of <clears throat> of depression <clears throat> that you might be experiencing. Yeah, because so it's it, so 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 it is. It's a, and 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 the, the internet is good. I have clients. Well, I want to know about this uh, brain, and I want to know uh, if I've got this or if I've got that because I went on the internet and I saw that you need to talk to a human being, right? Because on the internet now, I love some technology. It has helped me tremendously from a research pers perspective and keeping up with family members, which again, can be a facade because sometimes it's looking good on the internet and then you go home, it's chaos or, it, you, <laughs> excuse me. So so my thing is, it has its, its useful, it's useful on one, on one hand, but on another hand, the internet can take you down a rabbit hole in terms of making you think it's something wrong with you. Right. You got to have balance all the way around. That's man. right. That's right. Uh, and, and and so I always caution them because you start thinking is something wrong with you, then your 
go you go to the doctor and the first thing the doctor will do is write you a prescription out to cure it. And those pills that you get prescribed sometimes are not the cure. Now, when you talk about depression and then chronic depression, then we know that some permanent, again, changes are taking place in the brain that may need to be, be corrected. And so some short-term medication regimen along with talk therapy is a good idea. So I'm not saying I'm against medication, but I'm just, it has its uses. But I'm talking about before we get there, let's talk to somebody. And even when you go, you might go to a psychiatrist and they'll give you something. They'll even tell you, okay, now you need to find you a therapist because they'll give you that medication, but you need to talk to somebody about what it is that you're going through and what you're experiencing so that you can work through that and get that monkey off of your back. Hmm. And so that you can start living again because see, life is a journey. Yes. And this it, and it's a journey and, and it keeps on moving. That time keeps on going, whether you keeping up with it or not. And your life's journey, like I was saying one time, I said, oh, I hope I don't uh, grow old, become an old and bitter woman, right? We're talking about despair versus integrity in terms of how you are living your life, right? And so, again, my thing is, is find somebody to talk to and uh, uh uh, Reverend Times, I was so glad that you gave your um, uh, story because over the course of COVID, I experienced an anxiety attack. Never experienced anxiety in my life, but I had over 300 clients when I last looked at the tally from an <laughs> online perspective. And I said, oh, I'm going to have to stop this before I lose Yourself. <clears throat> my balance. Yeah. And I did. I ended up doing so because I was on that phone or I was watching all of this death and dying on TV, right? And, uh, or on the, you know, the telehealth and everything. And one day my sister was coming in from work and I was running out. She said, where are you going? I said, I got anxiety. I said, I'm having an anxiety attack. Never had it before in my life. Hmm. See, but, but right, yeah. and so I, something had to change. Reverend Times, you can um, you you can collaborate with that. Uh, you've seen different things. What can you tell somebody that is going through some things? How can they come to the other side? How can they find their way through? Uh, it might be somebody out there who's contemplating suicide let's talk to them reverend times oh that's a whole different subject uh brother yeah, Burundi. Yeah. can can we deal with that in another show well, we, we can uh <laughs> maybe one uh, uh we, we're out there in the audience we're gonna deal with that another time but i would ask for uh past the time just to say hey we love you hold on and persevere Pastor Times, what would you say? Yeah, and you know, that's another insidious uh, piece to depression, the suicide, or we call it S-I-H-I. Uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, suicidal ideation, homicidal mm -hmm. ideation. We don't like to talk about it, but, you know, that's a reality. Um, yes, it is. Uh, and, and, and so that depression can produce either or, right? or maybe even both, right? And so, mm -hmm. you know, as a therapist, every session I do, I I ask. That's I, ha I ask, are you feeling suicidal? Do you want to hurt yourself? Sometimes I have to drill down because people don't want to tell you, right? Uh, you know, Dr. Wilson, people don't want to tell you, even in That's session, right. about these insidious thoughts. Mm -hmm. That mental and, status uh, exam. Yes, uh, you know, and, and so I have to do it every time. 
Uh, and uh, it's super, super, super important because, you know, even, even you know, uh, as clinicians, we're trained uh, to look at a patient, right? Mm -hmm. Look at a client. And, and just by their physical presentation, we can do certain things, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. that will lead us down the rabbit trail. I love it, right? Dr. Wilson, the way you are able to to drill down on some, because the mind will speak. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, and so when the mind speaks, right, uh, we're trained to pick up on these cues, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can do it. I'm a pastor right. also, but I'm sorry, but pastors mm -hmm. are generally are not trained as mental health clinicians. And mm -hmm. so they, they may not pick up on certain subtle cues. And most of the mm -hmm. time, they're all subtle, unless mm -hmm. you're in psychosis. Um, and even then, you know, uh, you can have active psychosis yes. and not know it. But mm -hmm. the presentation is always very similar, yes. you know. And so when you're trained to pick up on these things, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't endorse medication for everybody, but some people just need it, Dr. Wilson, just to be absolutely. honest. Ab oh, absolutely. Absol absolutely. Oh, yeah. and, and I'm not saying don't need it, but I'm saying what my, what my comment was in terms of the medication was that, for instance, I said, I've never had anxiety in my life. But what happened over time, we're talking uh, COVID, what, two and a half years? Yes. Into individuals' issues, I mean, loss, death, dying, hearing people grieving. Yes. Sick. Uh, yes. In isolation. Watching it on television. Yes. Sometimes I'm on the phone and the TV is, and... I'm not thinking this impacts me. Remember, we are all all coexist in this universe. And yes. so that energy exchange, whether it's on the phone, video, right? Or face to face, yes. is is yes. is, you know, we're we're human just like they yes. are. And we're again a uh, aspect of the universe in which we all coexist. And not only that, we all have come with our own unique uh, issues as it relates to family systems and mm -hmm. our life's journey, right? And so I'm human too. And, yes. and I found out, not that I did not know, but I found out in real time that, wait a minute, a therapist need therapy too right here now because Again, I was running out. She said, well, where are you going? Well, I, right. <clears throat> and I'm like you, I'm still impacted by long COVID. Because I caught, I had COVID recently, mind you, with this new strain that's going around. So not only long, but, and another strain is out now. And so I just, finished a, a paper that I submitted to a, a journal that talks about this, that uh, therapists need to be cognizant of what kind, what's going on out there and what kind of interventions uh, because some of the traditional theoretical uh, approaches that we were using in terms of working with clients may not be relevant right now or relevant, but may need to be re revised from an assessment perspective, right? Because we so, need to know let me, let me what we're this. dealing with. Are you, say, are you saying that there are different strategies today, for instance, maybe back in the 50s or 60s, people use Freudism, uh, I guess Rogers, some mm -hmm. of the other psychologists and technicians, uh, even back in the day, they used to use shock therapy and different things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole different approach now. Now I know mm -hmm. that's a, a subject that mm -hmm. is a whole different conversation, but mm -hmm. is, is that the case? Well, well, some things are classic. Okay. I, I believe in Freudian from a therapeutic perspective because history is important. Right, and take some of his techniques. I, I mean, I, 
as well as other theorists. But what I'm talking about is from a standpoint of knowing what we're dealing with. Is this something that's COVID related? Because I submitted it to a biomedical journal. Is it COVID related or is it related to something else? And so revised assessment tools have had to come out in terms of our uh, assessing and initial assessments with clients because we kind of want to pinpoint what's going on children and their behaviors. Now, you still got research coming out talking about how kids are still behind I, in terms I, I of the- I need to ask this. Uh-huh. Uh, are, I mean, COVID is not talked about as much anymore as it was during that, what, two year stretch. So are people coming to both of you saying, I was impacted by COVID, so were they, impacted during that two-year period or a continuing COVID uh, mindset, whether it's uh, real or perceived, mm -hmm. what's going on with that as far, I know COVID is out there, but people are not talking about it. So how is it impacting uh, people still today? Both. So you've got COVID, you've got long COVID, and then you've got COVID variations still cycling in the system, right? And so COVID has had an impact on individuals in different ways, socially, psychologically, physically, spiritually, right? Cognitively, right? And uh, the elderly and children, adolescents caught it the most because when we start talking about the developmental aspect of the self and we talk about the various domains, that social aspect of the self from the, the, the children and adolescent aspect took a real hit. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and, and then from a, a cognitive perspective as well, because a lot of the studies, it was a study that was released yesterday that talked about how boys were impacted a lot more by COVID and the shutdown than girls were for some reason, right? Well, I can comment on that uh, uh -huh. if you'll allow. Uh -huh. Boys are usually more active and less socially at a young age, less socially, I guess, compatible, and they need a bit more work. They got to get up and move. And if if, if, if they can't, uh, and they don't have anything to uh, apply, it, it becomes difficult. I, and let me explain it if I can like this, and we're toward the end of our show. Um, boys got all this harnessed energy. And if they don't have a place to put it, they'll get in trouble. So, testosterone. Yes. <laughs> I, I didn't want to break it down like that, but it, uh -huh. it, it's very and true. So, and yeah. it has to be talked about in anything, uh -huh. trying to understand the motivations of young men. It has uh -huh. to be talked about because uh -huh. sometimes they can't, unless they get training, they can't control themselves. As uh -huh. I say, we're at the end of our show. Uh, I would like to give uh, both of my guests uh, a, a great thank you, and I'm going to come back to you for a final statement. I would like to have a quick word on my one of my sponsors who I'd like to share with you. Uh, this sponsor is A Rocket Moving and Storage, mm -hmm. and I am looking for their uh, I'll come back to that in a second. But right now, please share your final statement on mental health and the holidays. What are some things? I know depression, loneliness is out there. I just want to say again, if you're going through those things, reach out to Pastor Times, reach out to Dr. Deborah, reach out to me. Um, also, as Dr. Deborah said, 
find you some entity, either a group or an individual that you're comfortable with and mm -hmm. do what you got to do to survive. Don't feel shame about it. That's right. That's right. And, and it, it, it's a key. And whatever you're going through can be over and you can see on the other side. It doesn't have to impact everything right now. It's not all or nothing. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. Uh, you can get past whatever it is, too. And I want to share that. And I, I want to turn it over, uh, Brother Times, your final statement. Um, yeah, mental health is, is so difficult uh, in a lot of respects. Mm -hmm. Because people tend to not want, I, I'm going to use the term you use, Broody, Brother Broody, stigma. People don't want the stigma. You know, you're crazy or something's wrong with you. But the truth is that, uh, <laughs> not to be flippant, flippant, but we're all diagnosable at some point, right? There's a, in the DSM-5, I would have pulled it off the shelf. I, I think it covers just about every aspect of uh, human behavior and emotion. And mm -hmm. and so we're all in there somewhere, right? So don't feel like, uh, you know, you have to hide, right? Mm -hmm. Don't feel like you have to be isolated or alone, because you don't. You know, you mm -hmm. have qualified mental health people, professionals out there, who uh, are willing and able to listen to you. Take care of yourself. That's the most important thing, and we tend to forget as a uh, black people for sure, uh, uh, but as people in general, mental health is health. And so mm -hmm. we have to look at that in a different way. We have to view it through a different type of prism. And you know, a lot of times what I do is I educate, I educate, I educate, I educate uh, my client because they may not understand their presentation, you know? And, and so, uh, yeah. Come to us, talk to us, find yourself a mm -hmm. mental health professional to talk to. It's, the, you know, there shouldn't be any stigma now. We've all been affected by COVID yes. and other things. So, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, uh, time to just kind of recognize that, hey, I've got to check that box. Mm -hmm. that's all, that's Very I'm much understood. About. I just want to share this. I wanted to share it earlier. This is a rocket moving and storage, full service mover since 1959, local, commercial, interstate, and interstate. 713-748-6024, a rocket moving and storage, one of Source Seekers, uh, Source Seeker Media Network's main sponsors, and we appreciate them. And thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Deborah, uh, mm -hmm. your final statement? Okay. Uh, talk to somebody. Don't don't get up. Keep going no matter what. Uh, the storm doesn't last always, right? So, so. yeah, and and like Doctor um, uh, Reverend Time said, you know, find somebody to talk to. Okay, the, we got a uh, nine eight eleven hotline. For is it eight eight eleven for uh for suicide? I think uh, it's nine eight eight. Nine eight eight for uh suicide. I used to have my number sitting right here. I'm in my other office today, but it's a uh you know call the the hotlines if you're experiencing a some some something that you 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 know you feel like you're losing it. Can you call nine one one? But before you get to that, try to find somebody to talk to. Be vulnerable. Nothing yeah. wrong with being vulnerable. Okay? Yeah, that's a difficult thing. It's a, it's a billion people in the world and you're just one. I always say if you go up in an airplane and you look down, you can't distinguish a human being from a tree, from whatever. All you can see is a big old land man. Now you can see the green. That's a God thing. You can see the green and you can see the fields. You can see the map, but you can't distinguish the human from the car, from the tree and the, and the soil and the water. So we're just an aspect in the universe. And so 
be vulnerable, right? Your gonna, overall mental health and well-being depends on it. That's going to take some practice, some stigma mm -hmm. busting, and we're going to continue that work. I, I look forward to uh, working with you on your new show where we're going to be talking mm -hmm. about helping people with mental health issues as mm -hmm. well as kind of promoting the conversation. And yeah. so We'll just have a casual talk and let that show be a place where they can come for a soft, a, a, a safe space. Yes, ma'am. We're going to develop it. Yeah. And so, uh, or, or just to talk about it. Now, I'm not there to, you know, again, if you're feeling suicidal and you it's an emergency, 911. Yeah. Or 988, right, uh, Reverend Time? But, yes. but yeah, let's let's talk about it and put things in perspective because the world in which we all coexist can make you feel like there's something wrong with you. And nine times out of ten, it's just, we are all human. We all right? human, and everybody has something uh, that they deal with. And, but but every everybody, I don't care how much money you got, how many degrees you got how much you don't have, you know, everybody is dealing everybody. with something. Everybody. But understand that there are some people that will use whatever weakness you show against you. And we're going to talk about that in the further show. How okay. do you deal with that? Uh, and, and still provide safe space for yourself. Right. Because you, you do encounter those things. There are people at your job and in your school that will see you stuttering and laugh at you. And they'll see different things about you and go tell and run and tell everybody else. So we're mm -hmm. going to deal with that aspect also. This is the 147th episode of the Force, uh, Source Seeker Hour. I'm your host, Baruti Carl Alexander. I thank my guest, uh, Pastor Christopher Times. I thank my guest. Uh, Dr. Deborah Wilson, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, we will have our next show in, in two weeks, but coming up at nine o'clock will be Paula's Purse, which is another show in the Source Seeker Network. And we thank you. We will see you next week mm -hmm. on, uh, well, actually in two weeks, on the Source Seeker Hour. Thank you. Uh, the tape will be on A Brighter Source of Brighter Light on Facebook, and you can look at it right there. Thank you very much. Any any other hotline uh, questions or uh, statements you would like to make before we close? Be Blessings. well. Thank you.